Hello friends, I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hi and welcome friends. You know, I don't think I know anyone who hasn't experienced some kind of challenge in their relationships. I know I have. I'm sure that you have. But you know, where do we begin to have wisdom about the slow demise that leads to the brokenness of relationships, that severe damage that leads to a broken heart? Well, my guest today is Tina Conkin, and she has been helping the brokenhearted to heal for over 32 years through her own story of abuse and abandonment. Tina has touched thousands of lives by demonstrating that your past does not have to control your future. And she is the founder and director of R3 Lifeline, an intensive relationship lifeline and couples retreat, as well as an inspiring author and speaker who's been featured on many shows like Gene Simmons, Family Jewels, The Real Housewives of Orange County, The Today Show, and Dr. Phil, just to name a few. I've condensed it, but I want to welcome my dear friend, Tina Conkin. Thank you, Tina, for being with me today. I'm so excited that you're here. Brenda, thank you. And it is an honor to be here and be able to share not only my story, but the healing of the brokenhearted. That's my passion more than anything. Amen. Amen. I know I love your heart. We have shared many moments together, just, uh, you know, discipling and talking about how good God is. And so I really want you to just start right there. If you would, I want you to go back to the very beginning of where things really started for you in the areas of your own uh, issues of abuse and abandonment, let, let's unpack your story first, because I want our viewers to really understand that you too have walked through such a deep process yeah. with the Lord. Well, Brenda, I think that's what connected our hearts is that mm-hmm. we could really relate at that point of pain, even as young people and as, as kids, you know, mm-hmm. but I, I do want to share that for me, The real story doesn't begin until I had my own children because I grew up in a Christian home, as dysfunctional as that was, and my parents were not Christians, though, when um, they got married and had children, but they became Christians later. And why, why do I share that? Because I myself grew up in a Christian home, so there was lots of indoctrination about how you're not supposed to look at your past. Mm -hmm. And lots of scriptures about that. And my favorite scripture growing up was because I wanted to forget my past was, you know, forgetting in Philippians, I think it's 413 says forgetting your past and moving forward, moving forward towards the calling. Mm -hmm. And because I knew I was called, I felt that at a very young age, I was called to the hurting. That scripture was so important to me and, and it meant a lot. But what I didn't realize, and I came to realize, is that that scripture that I used was like burying emotions. It was like I was burying these hurt emotions, but they weren't dead. So they weren't really forgotten. They weren't really, um, they were just buried, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. now my biggest thing that, that I share with people, be careful that because of thinking that you're forgetting when you're not. Right. Thinking, and and I've gone back and looked at that word, does it really mean to forget or does it really mean to resolve the past, leave it behind you, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not part of your future. So Mm -hmm. I was just quoting a scripture, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget about it, you know, I'm Italian, Mm -hmm. forget about it, you know, that kind of stuff. And, And my culture played into it, you don't talk about the past. And so when I go trouble in my marriage and really it started with parenting more than it did my marriage and it was when my daughter turned eight this little baby that I had that was my life like she was the doll I never had and I didn't have to go to work so I just played all day from the day she was born as a matter of fact Brenda so badly that I used to wake her up from naps because she was taking Uh. up 
time, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> now she turns uh -huh. eight years old and I start pushing her away, like literally pushing her away emotionally, physically and every way. And uh, then, of course, you can imagine my husband sensing that as much as I tried to hide it, mm. as much as I tried to do the right things, but mm. I couldn't hide it from him. What became the saddest moment of my life is when I realized I wasn't hiding it from her. And I'll never forget, she went to my sister um, and said, why does my mommy love my brother and not me? Oh. And when my sister confronted me with that, it was just so heart-wrenching. And that's when I thought, I can't hide anymore behind closed doors. And you know, Brenda, um, I said I grew up as a Christian. I was also in ministry at that time. My husband was an associate pastor, and I was the children's pastor. So you wow. can imagine all the shame that goes with yeah. that. As I'm working with parents and children, and so... Um, I decided, you know what, I can't, I can't hide this. My husband was no longer willing to accept it because it kept getting worse. And so um, I went for help and I sought the best Christian counselor uh, in our area, truly had tremendous success. And I went to him and the first session I expressed, you know, and, and he validated what I had to say. And he goes, okay, well, I've got some work for you to do. And the work he was going to give me to do is about unveiling my own past those things that I had buried he wanted yeah. to be there and I just looked at him and I said and he wanted to know what my relationship with my mom had been like as a child and I said you know I didn't come for that I've, I've dealt with that mm -hmm. and he goes well but you're rejecting your daughter so we need to go back and and see what's there and in your own childhood and that's when I quoted that scripture. I said, you know, yeah. it does tell us to forget the past. So I just really need to deal with what's going on with me right now. And um, he said, why don't you just do this work and then come back next week? I said, OK. So the work that he'd given me to do was really my story. You know? <clears throat> and I felt feelings of rejection or when I felt, well, I did remember the statement, I should have never been born. So, mm. you know, those, those mm. issues were deep. Those roots were mm. deep. Yeah. But I was sure that, you know, as a Christian, we're not to bring those up again. And that Jesus has taken care of it and it's under the blood. And, you know, I had all the good, all right. the good Christian statements, we yeah. made, you know, mm -hmm. and all of it is truth if you're actually doing that. And not mm -hmm. burying these emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So I went back to him. I said, I tried to do this, but it's so against my religious upbringing and my Christian beliefs. And he said, okay, I see that you're really stuck. And I said, I really am because I think this is wrong. You know, this is bringing up what God has forgiven. And he said, yes, and God has, but have you? Mm -hmm. And it never really dawned on me you know mm. that meant and yeah. I've forgiven my mom well of course I spent years trying to forgive my mom and I just kept thinking well they said it's a decision I made the decision and so it's it is so right until every time I saw my mom and she said something that was critical or I or I experienced it as critical mm. then it was all back so you know a little note to self on forgiveness if if you think about someone and past pain comes back, mm. then you haven't really been forgiven yet. It's just been buried. Yeah, that's good. Um, so that's that's where I left. And he, he basically <clears throat> looked at me and he goes, you know, I can't work with you if you're not willing to dig deep and if you're not willing to go to the root of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, so, and I said, okay, well, I guess I won't be back because I'm not going into my past. And, you know, today I recognize that is so much fear. There was so much mm -hmm. yeah. in Pandora box. And then what? You know, then right. I got used to the pain. I got used to the, you know, the buried emotions, right? And yeah. so, um, I left. Another year went by. And now I got to tell you, it was, I, I'd done everything spiritually I knew to do. I decided to go on a 21-day fast to get this thing out of me. 
I decided um, to just seek God, let him do it. And, you know, Brenda, those are all great Christian principles are all great, but I wasn't, even in a fast, if I wasn't willing to take the root out and didn't mm-hmm. believe there was a root, then you're just fasting. You right. And Absolutely. It's just a ritual, right? It's something that. Well, it, I think and if is, I can respond to that, uh, it's, it, it, we're not really coming honest, you know, with our face unveiled, yeah. we're still hiding, we're escaping and trying to avoid the pain when yeah. really the person of Christ invites us to revisit and acknowledge that pain so that he can heal it. Yeah. So I think that's very important what you're saying. And, and you know, in my fast, I never prayed for God to seek out my heart. I prayed mm-hmm. for God to heal me of this. Like I knew it was me and not my daughter that I was sure accountable for, but I was yeah. like, Heal the wounds in my heart. I just wanted to stop. I wanted God to stop what I was doing. Yeah. We don't like the painful process. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't in a place to receive that I needed healing. I was in a place of saying, I need tools to not do this. I need to not reject her. You know, I need to love my baby girl. I need to be that mom that I didn't have, but I wasn't willing to go there. So that was the start of it. And um, when my sister saw that things were getting really bad, she heard about a program that was coming to Vancouver. And back then, it was a Dr. Phil program before he was the TV oh, personality. Wow. Um, he used to do personal growth and mm-hmm. uh, really worked with people's dark wounds, you know, and, and things that, that uh, weren't working in your life. And so his partner came to Vancouver to do a class actually for a church. And there were 17 of us in that very first class in Vancouver. And Brenda, it changed my life. It, it changed both my husband and I's life in a way that the only way I can describe it, um, I, I can't say, like, I know I had a born again experience, but I was five years old. And when I heard about Jesus that loved me just the way I am, that was like magic to me. Because yeah. in my world, kids should be seen and not heard. Yeah, um, right. I, no I think we grew up in the same era. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Different mom, same. same right. <laughs> um, so it was in that time that children sat at a different table. You weren't yeah. important. And the first story I heard about Jesus at five was that he grabbed the children to come yeah. to him while the disciples were trying to take them away. So to me, when somebody said, Jesus loves mm-hmm. me and made me more important than all the 5,000 adults he was talking to. So good. Yeah. It was, like, you know, something I, ne- an experience I never forgot and have never mm-hmm. forgot. Mm-hmm. So, but the experience of being born again, where you change, you know, mm-hmm. where you give up the old life for the new life and all things have become new. I, my husband or I ever had that experience. We were both born again children and just always kept that, right? Never really fell away from it and then had a big comeback. You know, I had some teenage moments, but nothing like, you know, yeah. having to come back from a deep, dark world. And so we never understood it. But when we left after that five days, we both, it was funny how we both looked at each other and said, do you think this is what it feels like to be born again? said I couldn't describe it any other way because for the first time we felt weight fall off of us yeah that weight that easily besets us that we didn't even know we were carrying and we made a decision that day that we would be doing this for the rest of our lives so here I am 25 post even though my husband's passed away um seven So I'm still doing that. And that is meeting people where they're hurting, but helping them not heal the hurt of today as much of going as much as going back to what they saw, heard, and experienced that created a belief system yes. that's working in their relationships. That is so good. And honestly, it's so refreshing to hear somebody say this. I just want to say kudos because what we've been uh, conditioned to believe traditionally in the church is 
you know, you say a little prayer at the altar, they slap you on the back. There, you're good. You're you're healed now. Don't you know? Go on, shut die. Go yeah. on and don't don't bother me with all your problems anymore. And uh, your problems are in the past. And yeah. um and really, you know, what is the saying that uh, you cannot heal what you do not feel? And so, if we just continue to compartmentalize stuff and try to project something that is false because we haven't dealt with the pain. But we're afraid to deal with the pain because we know it's going to, it, we have to pack it. We've got yeah. to do the hard work and yeah. love ourselves enough and our right. relationships enough and the Lord enough to do the hard work. But you know what? There, it's so rewarding when we do. And that's what you're all about. So I just want to say thank you for yeah. bringing that knowledge to believers and, and to those who, I know you work with people, you work with celebrities and you work with people probably from all walks of faith, uh, or no faith, I'm sure this provides you with an opportunity to really share so much of, uh, who we are as whole beings. Um, but you've written a book and yeah. you experienced, uh, some more brokenness in your life. Uh, let's kind of skip ahead a little bit to that part, you know, after you're, you're healing, you're getting a grasp on things and then Tell me what happens next or somewhere in the order. You know, if, if we're not aware of the things from our past. So I just shared what you saw, heard and experienced created who you are. So at a very young age, um, not as a child, but, you know, in my early, early 20s, I don't even know if I was quite 20. I lost someone I loved that I actually believed was the one I was going to marry him and we were going to be happy ever after. And um, he was a few years, he was probably four, five years older than me. And um, he was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And I nurtured him for a whole year of sickness. Now he had to move back in with his wow. parents. Because, you know, he couldn't take care of himself, but I was there every day. Well, he died. And we really thought God was going to heal. It was going to be part of our story and our testimony. He died a year later. And why is this story so important? Because I did not realize what I did that day. As, you know, I was allowed, it, it was, it was uh, not, just family was allowed to go to the, a funeral home, you know, where you view, and it was going to be a closed mm -hmm. casket, but where we got to view, and I was given some time to go in there alone. And I remember going in there, and <laughs> I looked. Now, I didn't remember this. You got to, so I understand the part of the story here where it's going to really make sense why it affected my marriage. Mm -hmm. I made a vow that day that I didn't know I made. Mm -hmm. I vowed. An inner vow. An inner vow. Yes, my inner voice. I didn't say it out loud. I didn't realize I was doing it. But as I was saying my goodbyes to him, the pain was so great and so much confusion and so much not understanding the whole thing, you know. And I was young and um, I just made the inner vow that I will never love like that again. Wow. Because wow. I could not risk that kind of pain again. Yeah. And life went on, you know, and... Mm. God to be the glory. I met my husband shortly thereafter. And as a matter of fact, my family was worried because they thought it was a rebound. Yeah. And concerned. And, but God was good. I really, and I even had a dream because I was scared too, because my family was mm -hmm. scared. And the worst part was the man that died was a singer and had recorded an album. Now my husband's a singer and leads wow. worship. So now they're really concerned, you know, that is a real, <laughs> yeah. Word. And I thought like, am I, you know, and he gave me a dream and in the dream, I picked my husband as if they were both alive. So I felt confident in me and, um, but that inner vow didn't go away just because I knew I loved Ron. Yeah. And that inner vow did not come into play until my husband's mom was dying. See, my husband didn't need nurturing. He wasn't that kind yeah. of guy. He was the nurturer. He's the one who hugged the kids. He's the one who was the affectionate one. 
you know, my love language is not touch, you know, his mm -hmm. was. So yeah. he was never in need of nurture. So I didn't give it. He didn't miss it. Right. <laughs> you know, he was your rock. Yeah. yeah, it worked um, until he was losing his mom. And wow. then he needed a shoulder to cry on. Then he needed affection. Then he needed, you know, um, I don't even know how to say it. He needed the dynamics shifted. Yes, he yeah. needed that. So it was one of those moments that I didn't know what to do with it. And again, I don't know about the inner vow. I'm not connecting mm -hmm. with that. So wow. I go to my friend and I know she's lost both her parents. And guess what I do? I ask her to be there for him. I said, look, I don't like, I can't. This oh, is one I don't know. And his mom's not even dead yet. And I'm just, and I'm barking out orders. It was wow. a drive to go see his mom. And I would keep saying, just go mm -hmm. or take a flight. Like, just go. And he always had excuses why he couldn't go. And finally, one day, I just said, I just booked you a flight. But I wasn't being soft or nurturing. I was barking, you know, and just saying, yeah. this is something you do, not because you want to or you just do it. And I remember going to my friend. I said, I, I just don't know how to do this. And so when vulnerability meets opportunity, you yeah. should have a fair going Yeah, on. obviously. But like I said, she was my friend. So we did life together as couples. And, you know, I just believed in mm -hmm. her helping him, but the, they met each other in the pain, right? Yeah. And you had total trust in these two people that you loved and they loved you. And up until that point, I actually believed that trust was a good thing. I later found right. out trust is not biblical. So we really mm. did rebuild our marriage based on the fact that God never told us to trust people. As a matter of fact, he said, the heart is deceitful. Yeah. And why you put your trust in men and in horses and in life, right? Right. But trust God. And we were told to love people. When I got wow. that, I knew that we could restore our marriage. I didn't have to try wow. to trust. I had to yeah. love. And we had to love from a pure heart. How are we going to love from a pure heart? We're going to love from a pure heart by doing what Jesus said. And in Matthew 19, 8, he said divorce was allowed because of the hardness of the heart. And Correct. that's when God showed me. I hardened my heart that day. And wow. brought me right back. I said, God, show me. Show me. And that's why the book is controversial because it sounds like I'm taking responsibility for the affair. I never took responsibility for the affair. Okay, time out. Let's tell the name of your book. How God Used the Other Woman. Okay. They can get it on Amazon. Okay. So in the book, it, it makes it really clear my, my views on trust and not rebuilding our relationship on trust, but rather looking at what Jesus said, and that is, why is there divorce? It's not because of adultery. Adultery doesn't just happen. He really... Right it clear it's because of the hardness of the heart and so ron and i started the r3 lifeline one mm -hmm. by examining ourselves and examining the hardness of our own heart so yeah. when showed me that day that i hardened my heart in the nurturing area it was the nurture that i'd made that inner vow yeah. so when nurture was required I didn't have it. I'd shut it down. And those vows are so powerful. So I talk about that in the book. But we also developed our program, the R3 Lifeline that you shared. And um, the R1 is the most important, and that is to reveal. And we had to go on a journey of reveal because you can't change or heal. Like you said, what you mm -hmm. won't admit or feel, but you cannot right. change or heal what you first don't reveal. Yeah. And for me, God had to really reveal where the hardness of my heart was in my marriage relationship, then in my parenting world, then with my friends. And as you start to open up that reveal step one, then you can go into step two, which is the R2, which is to rewrite. Now we can rewrite from adult perspective, not from mm -hmm. looking through the glasses of pain. Good.
So in our three-day program, we really take you through that and then finally get you to the place of the R3, which is to renew. And when you renew, you're making life better than it was before. You're making yeah. now what God talked about, this life and more abundant. Wow. I said and a you lot. know that you, you packed it in. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, I'm just thinking about how many couples, Tina, are living in this, well, I'm faithful. I haven't had any affairs on you. I'm, you know, I'm a good supporter. I'm this and I'm that. But the dynamics of their marriage and their commitment to one another has been hardened. It's grown, it's waxed cold. Let's say it yeah. that way. You know, when a when the Bible, the scriptures talk about how that our love for Christ waxing cold, where our love for one another can do the same thing. And that is I think that's what I'm hearing you describe is that hardness of the heart that can lead to such injury in relationship. So um, how do people find you uh, and how can they connect with you if they feel like, wow, this is news to me and I want more of it and I want to I want to sign up for that program? So if they, if they go to tinaconkin.com, then they can know all about me and the book and everything else. And the book is on Amazon. And I've got another book, Love, Sex, and Money, too, is on there. And But if they specifically want to know about the three-day retreat, the three-day workshop, it's relationshiplifeline.org. So relationshiplifeline.org. Or easy, it, everything leads to it anyways at tinaconkin.com. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. And I think my biggest, um, my big, my heart is for children. You know that. Yeah. yeah. They grow up in healthy homes. Even sometimes if a mm. marriage doesn't work out, if they have healthy mm. parents, they're yes. going to be healthy. You know, they're going to oh. have a good mindset. Yeah. That's so my heart as well. And I just, uh, listen, I champion you and what you're doing. And I want you to know, I, I may have never told you this, but hearing your story again, my daughter went through some of the very same things that mm -hmm. you described. She lost someone that she loved and thought was her future at a very young age. And it was shattering. And this was a time when we both had been traumatized and, uh, you know, I'd been through so much. And so, listen, folks, this is so important and critical that we go back to the place of our pain because we stop growing from there if we just stuff it away yes. and pack it up and try it to needs avoid to be uprooted. Yes. And so we can't do that until we've actually faced it and acknowledged it and uh, grieved over it and then allowed the Holy Spirit to come into that place that that is so taboo for us that we just don't know what to do. Because when we uh, displace our pain, we give it power. And that's going to manifest in other areas of our life. Would you agree with that? I do. And you know what? I didn't, I, I'm not going to take credit for this, but I, I say it all the time and I don't know who said it, but I heard it. Buried emotions are not mm -hmm. dead emotions. They will rear their ugly head up and you yeah. don't know when, but something triggers them and they're right back there. Yes, they, they really are. And so, uh, so I, I think that we call it weed whacking, you know, when wow. you, yeah. If you weed whack and you only get the top, you yeah. haven't done anything. you're still doing damage yeah. underneath to the real plant. It's, it's so true. Uh, boy, don't I know it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, and I've spent years doing the hard work. And I think that because we are uh, human creatures who are, we're not infallible. We, we live in a fallen world and evil takes place in the earth. But as we grow from glory to glory, as the scriptures say, in yeah. our experience, in our journey with the Lord, we can learn to overcome and put our foot on and conquer those things that once marginalized us in those relationships, uh, in our identity, and held us back from that fulfillment of what we were all put here to, to do, and that's to be in relationship with each other and with God. So what a beautiful thing. And I, you know, listen, I hope that a lot of people will watch this and will connect with you. Uh, and, and I hope you'll connect with me too uh, at brendacrouch.com. I want to be encourager into yeah. your life as well and a voice of hope for you because listen, we're living in a culture that is absolutely uh, manifesting 
all this brokenness that people have been carrying around. And so this is why we're seeing uh, such deep offenses and uh, yes. people being prickly and, and not able to figure out how to uh, coexist with their differences. And so when you're changed on the inside and the person of Christ, you meet and you discover who you are as you discover him, you're changed and you begin to love. You begin to not feel the fear so much, but you have, it's traded with compassion and with the love of Christ and the love of God for all of humanity. So listen, Tina and I love you and we want you to find your reason to move forward and get unstuck out of these broken patterns. And uh, we just encourage you today. Tina, any last, uh, last words as we close the I program? I want to leave with these. My 20 years post the infidelity yeah. were the best 20 years of our marriage. And we were married 32 years mm. before he passed away. So Wow. So awesome. So when you so go through hope. the renew, <laughs> hope. Yes. 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 There is hope and there's hope for you too, my friends. So thank yes. you for joining us today. Tina, will you come back and be with me again? Yes. All yes. right. We'll do it. Yes. Okay. Right. Well, thank you friends for joining me. I'm Brenda Crouch and I'm going to invite you back again the next time. And we'll talk about something else that'll be wonderful information for you to live by. Bye-bye. <laughs>